Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hi everyone, welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. I'm Catherine. And I'm Rachel. And uh, today's episode was inspired by one of our uh, viewers, uh, yeah. Emily from Idaho. Uh -huh. And she suggested a place that Catherine and I really didn't know anything about. So we were like, oh, let's check that out. The name of this place is the Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve in Idaho. And it got its unusual name um, because of the way it looks, kind of like a lunar landscape. This explorer called Robert Limbert, he actually was the one who explored it. And he wrote an article about it for the National Geographic and gave it that name in the article and it kind of stuck. Hmm. So, so that's sense. Yeah, it makes sense because, you know, as we were saying, it has that lunar look to it. Yeah. And in fact, NASA astronauts um, visited the park in 1969. So these astronauts were pilots. They weren't, they weren't Obviously geologists. Obviously not geologists, yeah, yeah. but going to the moon, which has a volcanic kind of terrain, mm -hmm. they needed to learn how to become familiar with and recognize this kind of geology. Mm -hmm. So they spent time in the craters of the moon learning about geology. And then they would know which uh, rocks were worth picking up on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Because they were different. And what was what? So this park is about an hour's drive from Ketchum, Idaho. The landscape is kind of developed because it had a volcanic eruption more than 15,000 years ago. And so you have all kinds of cinder cones, craters, lava tubes, all kinds of stuff like that appearing on the landscape. It's a lava scape. It's a lava That's what I like to call it. <laughs> I think that's a good name to, for it. And, you know, just for those who don't know, you, lava tubes sort of developed. It's like a cave developed through a volcanic eruption. But unlike a cave, which you want to go in one side, you can go right through it. So when we're talking about not the earliest formation of, mm. uh, of the craters, but a little bit later on in modern times when it was kind of discovered, when Lewis and Clark were passing through the region in the 1800s, they were on their way to find a route to the Pacific. Mm -hmm. and and one of their expedition members kind of got lost in the crater's area. And so he managed to get out, but mm -hmm. um, I think that was one of the earliest sort of, I guess, mappings or recordings of, of that area. Yeah, and then later on when the pioneers were going west, uh, they used that trail to sort of get away from, there was a lot of activity with Indians and they kind of wanted to get away from that hostility. And so the Oregon Trail, mm -hmm. part of the Oregon Trail went through there. And they didn't really love what they saw because, you know, one of the pioneers called it the devil's vomit. And even today, it's funny that visitors, maybe when they learn mm -hmm. about craters or they go there, sometimes they have the impression, oh, just a bunch of black rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it's so hot and there's not much water. You might think there's not a lot of plant life and a lot of animal life there, but you would be wrong. Yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah. Animals, for starters. Mm -hmm. I think there are like more than 600 um, animal species there. A ton, yeah. And 100 and some bird species. So since they're, these are desert conditions, obviously these animals have specific adaptations for dealing with the lack of water mm -hmm. and the really harsh temperatures. And they have animals that you cannot find anywhere else in the world. So there's this cute guy called the yellow-bellied marmot. Oh. You see him here? Uh-huh. So some cute little critters. Some critters. And I know when you and I were looking at pictures, of this place, we mm -hmm. were sort of struck by the by images of plants and trees like popping up out yeah. of this landscape. I mean, it's very surprising to see. So another comment people have is they seem so evenly spaced, the plants, that they wonder somebody planted them, but actually not. It's all natural, just happened to come up that way. The rangers don't like <laughs> <laughs> They're not horticulturists as well. <laughs> Probably the most famous attractions at Craters of the Moon would be the caves. Mm -hmm. So there are more than 300 documented caves in the park, and they find more every year, so that's yeah. very exciting. Yeah, definitely. But there are five um, developed caves that you can explore. And a lot of people take, there's a seven-mile loop drive, and you can see some of those caves along the way. So that's one way you can explore the park. Another way is to take a hike um, with a guide. Well, I found this, uh, this neat piece on the, on the park's website from the former chief of interpretation. And his tips were, um, one, go early or late in the day, mm -hmm. because you're not just gonna see scorching hot black rock, you're gonna see a lot more subtle, nuanced colors in the landscape. Yeah, you talked about there's streaks of pure red and there's some iridescent blues and silvers that you can see during that period, so it's a lot of beauty there. Two, second tip, um, don't just go in the summer, a lot of people do, but mm -hmm. he was saying that you can see a different kind of beauty, I guess, in winter, fall, and spring. Yeah. Like flowers, snow. Mm -hmm. And then three, he really said, of course, he emphasized that you should check out ranger programs and walks because... You'll get a lot more out of the experience. Yes. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our walk on the moon at Craters of the Moon. For more information, check our blog and HowStuffWorks.com. 
and we'll see you next time for more coolest stuff. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.